Greetings everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hard Talk HR, bringing you fresh and inspiring content from around the world of work. I'm your host, Mihai Noy. My guest today will be, backed by popular demand, Nigel Riesner. Nigel is the author of The Impact Code and It's a Zoo Around Here. And the reason why I invited Nigel back, because like most of us, Everybody is locked in their home office or working from home due to the current coronavirus pandemic. So communication is key to get the business going. While we have the right technology available at our fingertip, whether it's a conferencing or mobile phones or emails, communication somehow very often can go off track. And it's not necessarily because of the intention of the sender of the message. More often than not, the way we decode the message because of our values and just for simply who we are, that distorts the initial message. And that creates conflicts and then creates a lot of inefficiency. So I invited Nigel to come on the show and sort of decode the secrets of communication. What's stopping us to really work and communicate effectively? And how can we get a grip of communications in teams, in organizations, in a real and a virtual world? I hope you will enjoy today's episode. And if you do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. At Hard Talk HR, we bring you fresh ideas and inspiring content from around the world of work. So Nigel, it's so great to have you again on the show, back by popular demand. Last time we talked about the impact theory. And now when we referred from the impact theory, we referred it this time, we, we, we are back again to talk about communication and unlocking motivation, therefore unlocking human potential. Now you have written a book, it's a zoo around here. You are advocating that effective leadership, effective communication, it's all about like a zookeeper, be able to uh, manage the difference in people. Uh, having said that, uh, you talk about the various types of, of communication uh, uh, communication strategies or communication uh, way, way we relate to each other. And you use the analogy of dolphin, elephant, lion. Uh, and the fourth one is the monkey, of course. So tell us about tell us about your theory and tell us about this very simple but very powerful idea of effective communication and how it relates to not just communication but beyond that to motivation. Okay, it's even more important in today's world where you've got groups of people all over the world in self isolation. So never has there been a time where communication has been more important. So for someone like me who is used to being on stage in front of literally thousands of people and I get a standing ovation at the end of my presentation, all of a sudden now, this monkey, which is who I am, and I have a phenomenal mask, which if on the video it's going to get seen, you know, I have a fantastic monkey mask. And the problem is for someone like me to be isolated in my own home, in my office, not seeing thousands of people is a real stretch. And if you are my leader, and remember, we lead people and we manage things. So from today, leaders now need to call themselves zookeepers. And as you're as the zookeeper and you're interviewing me, you need to understand that my needs are very different to something of yours because you're much more technically brilliant. You've got many more different skills than I have. And when we communicate, even one on one and as a far apart as we are, we need different things. So I need bananas, I need chocolate, I need a standing ovation, I need praise. Um, the problem is, you're not here at the end of this interview to give me a hug. And even a virtual hug won't be enough for me. So how do you communicate in today's world, and especially over the next couple of weeks, because you've got remote workers, how do you relate to me? Because I'm a special monkey. I need certain things. The problem is in, in zookeeping is there's other different animals and you've got to be able to adapt your speech to the different styles of your people and you'll only know your people if you've actually listened to them. A good friend of ours, Shay McConnon, he says, when was the last time you gave your staff a good listening to? Now that's different because in theory we speak a lot to our staff. 
The problem is if you listen to your staff, you'll actually hear their buying signals, their communication signals. So as a monkey, I expect from you a bar of chocolate in the post in the next couple of days. I expect you to tell me I'm the best speaker you've ever been interviewing over the last 20 years, because that's what, that's what drives me. That's what makes me excited. Now, that's me as a monkey. You're going to be interviewing loads of other people and you're going to have some very senior economic professors and you might have some really political leaders who are much more what I call lions. Lions are traditionally what we used to call leaders. They were the managing directors, the CEOs. Lions are what I call self-disciplined. They're visionary. They're straight talkers. They can work on their own. And they don't expect you to be gushing. What they would have expected is for us to start it on time. So I should have been ready at 10.59 with my computer ready. And I kind of remembered-ish that we had a Zoom call. And as a monkey, it wasn't a big deal. But if you were a really serious line, you'd be really annoyed with me that I wasn't prepared at 10.59, ready for the go. Because lions expect, they expect nowness. They don't even expect nearly nowness. So in South Africa, they have a really cool phrase. If you ask somebody, are you coming? Often South Africans will say, just now. Just now doesn't mean now, it means soon-ish. If you want a South African to come now, you need to say, now, now. Because they need a certain word to really mean immediate. And lions, and you will have lions, especially in the world that we work in, who want immediate responses. They don't want any hesitation. They don't want you to think. They expect you to, on demand, know the answers. So if, you, if I was a lion, I would have expected the questions in advance, because I, I wouldn't want to look stupid. I'd have expected a formal invitation in writing to my home address and maybe a bottle of champagne in advance of the fantastic speech that I'm going to deliver. Now, that's how you have to impress a lion. Then we have the two other animals, which are elephants. And elephants just make life hard because they would have wanted all the questions three weeks ago They'd have, wanted re, they'd have wanted to send another list of questions last week. And now with the isolation and the, and the virus, COVID-19, because they want the exact number. To me as a monkey, it's COVID something. But to, a, to an elephant, it's a specific number. And there's probably a reason why it's called COVID-19. Do you know the reason why it's called COVID-19, by the way? I have no idea. Okay, you and I wouldn't because we're not elephants. Yeah. If we were yeah. elephants, there's probably a very good reason. And by the end of the interview... If we were doing this live, someone would be texting through with the answers. But it's not that important to you and I. But to elephants, it would be vital that we knew the information. And obviously, both of us are now stupid because we don't know the answer. So elephants need time. If you're in isolation, they're loving this because they didn't really like people to start with. So they've enjoyed being on their own, being able to have time to think with no one disturbing them. And then the last lot of animals are the dolphins. And this is killing them because they want to reach out. They want to touch. They want to hug. They want to communicate. They want to have coffee. They need people to make them thrive. It's very rare you see a dolphin in the ocean on its own. It, it's in a pod. It's with a family. And it will create sounds to attract other people. So in your team today, everyone who's listening to this, that you have a basic four animals. Now, I'm not going to get into advanced zookeeping because we've just written another book with nine new animals which is a bit confusing. I'll introduce four more in a minute. But every zoo, every email, every interaction you have, expect different requirements. Now, have you done much Zoom work over the last couple of weeks? Constantly. And I'm very proud of myself because I certainly passed one of the tests. You being a, a monkey, I'm being somewhat an elephant and a, and a lion. I was quite disciplined not to send you questions because I had a list of questions prepared, but I was disciplined not to send those questions. But I did send you a reminder 15 minutes before our call that, hey, Nigel, do you remember we have this call chat, Zoom chat today? So, because I knew that you would have, you would have forgotten otherwise. So. I forget, but I was walking my dog about 11 minutes ago. There you go. We need to rush back. There you go. <laughs> do you think about Zoom? You know that you have control of this call and you can mute the participants. Now, let me just share something. There's a problem because if you mute a lion and you've given away control, you've actually taken away all of my thought process and lions hate to be muted. 
Now, you wouldn't have known that because that's not the study of people that I understand. But monkeys, if you don't mute them, they just talk over everybody. And the elephants then don't get a chance. And then you probably know there's a chat facility where we can ask questions in the middle of this so I don't disturb you. Now, I didn't even know that facility was going. And I did a two hour presentation recently and I didn't answer one question because nobody told me that people were emailing all these questions to me. So you've got to understand that when you're acting as a zookeeper, you have to visualize all of your participants as one of the four animals. Now, you don't have time to send a pro forma to everyone to say, if you could just fill in Nigel's questionnaire, that would help. So I'm not going to plug it, but I will. On my website, I have, a, I have a little quiz. But if everyone who read my website and filled in the quiz sent me all the information in advance, when I spoke to them, I would know the answer. The question is that we've worked together for the last 10, 15 years. I kind of know your style. And you definitely know my style because we've had lots of years to work together. But imagine this was your very first interview and you had 20 people on the screen and you just spoke in your language. So I don't know how many languages you speak, but I speak fluent Hebrew. So I'm going to continue the rest of the interview in Hebrew and it will be phenomenal for me. And for those who understand Hebrew, that's for sure. <laughs> Point. But I wonder how many of the listeners understand Hebrew. Yeah. And that's what it sounds like unless you zoo keep your troops that even though they're speaking in English or French or German, whatever, it will sound a completely different language. So let's, let's just be clear just for the audience, for the sake of audience. So basically, first of all, we are not implying by any mean that people are animal. It's more about the, the deep fundamental differences and who we are is fundamental different as if we were from a different planet, despite the fact that we don't look that much different. So it's not something which is visible in the outside, but inside we are drastically different. And you suggested there are four, uh, basically it's a four simple categories we can look at, relate to people. Uh, the lion who is driven by the result, the monkey who is, who is, who is very playful and, 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 and needs a lot of, a lot of attention. Uh, the dolphin who's all about caring and loving and, and being together and a sense of community. And of course the elephant, which is all about the details and getting things right. That's what, that's what kind of a prime motivational, uh, sort of a values. So once we understand that, okay, we are different and I kind of start getting to know my style, you know, your style and other, other audience probably try to relate it. Okay. This person must be an elephant. This person must be a dolphin. So they try to sort of guess, uh, each other's style, but sometimes this guess on one hand can go really wrong. And the question what I meant to ask you that even, even if I know my style, the big, the biggest challenge in empathy, at least what I find is it's not the getting in the other person's shoe. That's quite easy, but getting out of my own, that's so fun. That's so fundamentally difficult to get rid of my lion elephant and become a monkey so I can relate better to you. So what's your suggestion on that regards, how to break this code, how to find this synergy if I want to relate better to another person? And it's a brilliant question that you just asked. It was a really deep elephant question that you asked. <laughs> and so I got bored halfway through because as a monkey, I wanted to interrupt two or three times, which is one of the problems as a monkey. And the, and the reason I'm so proud of myself is that I changed from being a monkey to a zookeeper. So you can't be another animal. Have you ever played squash? Of course. It's one of my favorite games. Okay. So in squash, where do you play if you want to win the game? Now you control the T, the center. So you control the center. So the person who can control the center of communication is what I call the zookeeper. So you have four quadrants on a computer. You have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And when I get angry, and this is some advanced zookeeping, as a monkey, I go massively into my top left corner and I actually turn into a hyena. Now this is a bit advanced here. So I can be playful. And if imagine this was the fifth phone call we were supposed to have and you kept canceling me. And then I got an email half an hour ago and you kept canceling me and said, look, we need to change it. We need to change it. After a while, the playful monkey, I can get quite angry. And what will happen is instead of getting angry, I can get destroyful. That's a good English word, destroyful. That's not even a word. I can actually destroy the process. If you want to command me and you want to understand my needs, you've got to get to the center of the court, to the center of the grid and think, what do I need to do to rein Nigel in? Let's just have a bit of fun with Nigel, ask him how he's doing. 
it doesn't matter he was a minute late. Obviously, there must have been a problem because I've worked with him for years. I wonder what's going on. Is his family okay? Is he having some fun with the computer? Could he not get into Zoom? And make me feel comfortable instead of saying, I must have sent you the details, there was a password, and going through the Zoom technicalities. So the job from today is not to become a different animal because you are who you are and I'm who I am. I just need to understand you have different needs. So I'd love chocolate and I love bananas. The problem is if you're an elephant and your basic need is to have a structured lunch and I start lobbing over your cubicle, bananas and chocolate, I think you get pretty annoyed. What I've got to do is I've got to come into the centre, send you a little selection of chocolates. Have you ever had lint chocolates? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. If you open up a box of lint chocolates, you will notice those chocolates were designed by a zookeeper. So you open it up, and not only is there a picture of all the different chocolates and where they're positioned, there is a description for all the different chocolates, how many calories, the fillings, and the centers. Now, for elephants, that's just amazing because they can study something. The monkeys go to the second tray before the first tray is finished because we are just playful. The lions eat the corner chocolates because they're normally covered in silver foil or gold. And the dolphins just eat any ones that are left because they're just nice. Even a simple thing like lint chocolate is being designed by someone quite clever. Every piece of communication, whether it's written by email, by Zoom, you've got to be thinking, if I got to the centre position of squash, or I got to the centre category of a zookeeper, what do I need to share with people to let them feel included? Do you know how many people, if you sent a group Zoom email out to people, sorry, imagine we had 50 people on this phone call and you sent the same email to 50 people, I promise you the monkeys would be a bit late, the elephants would have been ready about 40 minutes ago, the lions would have been really annoyed that we didn't start exactly 11 o'clock, and the dolphins would be ringing everyone up to make sure why aren't their faces appearing on the screen. So give us a couple of tips about, I mean, when, when there's so much change happening so quickly and when most of our communications happen on not even emails on instant messaging so we tend to respond automatically from a subconscious but of course the way we decode these instant messages whether it's an sms whether it's an instant messaging whether it's an email we decode it through our own lenses so give us a couple of tips of how to avoid this kind of a bias and how to ensure that we can get our style of communication closer to each other in order to get results and there's one of the problems that when you send an instant message, the person who sent the message has thought about what he wanted to write and sends it off. So sometimes I'll get a message from my secretary that says, you haven't called me for 10 minutes. What I read is she's annoyed with me that I haven't responded. She's just sending me a message saying, you haven't rung me for 10 minutes. I thought we were supposed to have a meeting. I then reply back, what are you talking about? We, we, it wasn't scheduled. We can have a fight on email or text that would never happen if we were face to face. And so lots of communication that's happening now is that every time you're about to send a message, what I'd like people to do is to write the message before they put the, the name on the top. Now I'm gonna repeat that, is to start writing the message and then think about who is the receiver of this text? Because if I was sending this to you, it would be like this, hi Mahali, um, I just want to change the details of the meeting we're going to be having. I know we said it was going to be 11. Could we do it at quarter past 11? Because you don't know that Alfie, my dog, has just hurt his paw. Now, this is serious. He's hurt his paw. And before we did this phone call, I had to bathe his legs. I took him out for, for a little walk. If I sent that to you, you'd go, oh, that's OK. I understand. Nigel's normally on time. I understand. But if I wasn't careful, I'd do this. Uh, can we just move it to 11.15, please? And you'd be thinking, that's a bit rude. This was organized two weeks ago. Why isn't it being respectful of my time? I know the way your brain works. I would have sent you a slightly more detailed text. If I was doing it to my PA, who's a bit more caring than you, by the way, I would have said, look, Alfie's hurt herself. Can we just reschedule it? Hope it's okay. I trust your dog's okay. And she'd have gone, no problem at all. If I was doing it to a monkey, they wouldn't have been even ready at 11 o'clock. It wouldn't have made any difference. But to a lion, they would have been very annoyed because what I've actually said to them is, my dog is more important than you. 
So you've got to look at every message you send, which is really hard when you're self-isolated, because we haven't got time to think that way. But great leaders are great zookeepers. And I want you to visualize you as a zookeeper going around to all the animals in your zoo and just randomly giving them any food you fancy and wondering why the animal then doesn't respond to your need. It's not that complicated because if you ran a zoo, you would feed the food the animals want, not the food that you've got. So I've got plenty of chocolate in my fridge, as you know. I'm a chocolate freak. I have big bars of chocolate, like you can see, which says, be a zookeeper. We had Cadbury's do these special covers. It's a kilo bar of chocolate. If I gave everyone in my team one of these bars of chocolate for doing a great job over the last two weeks, 75% of my staff would think I was nuts. Now, it's that simple. If you give everyone a pay rise, do you think 100% of your staff would be happy? Of course they would. No, they wouldn't. Okay. Because what I'd want, first of all, is to, for, to have a chat. I'd want someone to tell me what a fantastic job I've done. I'd want to know that they still love me, that, you know, even in these times, they can send me some jokes. And if you did it to a dolphin, the first thing they'd be thinking of is, I hope everyone's got a bonus. The only one who'd be really grateful is the lion. The elephants would want to know what have they done to deserve it. And it should have been all backdated to last month. So you can't just give money to people thinking that's the answer because next month, how do you reward the animals? So I know you've got a team of people that you work with in your events. If somebody did a great job today and I, and I was one of your team and I'm a monkey and next month I do a great job, it's no use saying to me, I gave you a pay rise last month. I've forgotten about that pay rise. I want another bar of chocolate every time I see you. Now, let me tell you how tiring that becomes for a zookeeper. I want a bar of chocolate every time you see me and I want a kiss. That might be inappropriate, but that's what I want. To an elephant, they're going to want different things. So your job is to understand, and I think we may have spoken about this last time when we spoke about the impact code. Everyone you meet has personal needs. And the reason why people come to work is to get their personal needs met. So one of my personal needs is Diet Coke. One of my personal needs is when I come to an airport and I come to one of your events, I want a man or a woman meeting me at the airport with my name on a board. It's important to me because it makes me feel special. I don't care if we go on a bus on the back of a motorbike, but I want to feel special. I want to feel like you love me. That's my bar of chocolate. A lion would have expected a Porsche, a driver with a cap, to make sure they were there with their name and their title. The elephant will know how to get to the conference on their own. They don't need any drivers. And the dolphin will be, would want to make sure all of us got there safely. Basic, simple stuff has got to be designed for the animal that you're dealing with, not who you are. And especially in this time more than ever, when people are self-isolated, I need to feel like people love me. The lines need to feel important. They don't want to be muted on a Zoom call. The elephants want to be sending, being sent lots of paperwork to make sure they feel included. But it's very interesting because what I see in my LinkedIn message, of course, is continuously in my LinkedIn feed, you see how important it is in times like this to check on people, check on they are okay, and make sure that you call your friends, you call your family, you call your coworker, make sure you regularly check in. And, and that got me thinking that, yes, it's perfect for some people or probably perfect for most people, but it's not necessarily perfect for everybody because not everybody wants to receive that, hey, are you okay? A message and every every 10 seconds or even not even once away once a day maybe just a weekly check-in or a monthly depending on your need and that's the whole point it's about their needs so elephants do not want to be disturbed every five minutes they just want to feel like you know they're there and when they send you some work they just want you to be acknowledged that they've had their work sent so if i send you an email to say thanks so much indeed for this i just want you to let me know you've received the email or if I've sent you work, you know, there's lots of stuff being sent by mail. There's paperwork being checked or I've just done a WinZip document. I've got no idea if this person's got it. I think I've done it right. I've just had an email literally a minute before we started this call to go. Thanks so much. I'm so impressed you managed to do it. That was like a bar of chocolate to me. 
I sent this thing off and they've got my picture. They've got my bio. We've just organized an event in November and I'm so chuffed. Other people, lines will go, I, I knew they'd get it. I've done this loads of times before. They don't need that acknowledgement because they think they're good enough anyway. But what they do want is a little certificate or they want star of the month. On LinkedIn, they want a shout out. They want a recommendation or they want a testimonial. Elephants and dolphins don't need testimonials. What they want is acknowledgement. And of course, the dolphins, they want the tender, loving care. For their team, not just for them. And yeah. That's the whole point. Oh. A, a dolphin hasn't just done it for themselves. It was a team effort. You know, in my house, you know, my wife is here, my daughter's here, my dog is here. I've got a whole team of people that make sure I'm all right. So they all need to be thanked. And I sometimes forget to thank people. There's a monkey. I think I've just done it. Hello, everyone. Here's chocolate for everyone. That doesn't work for everybody. And I'm a zookeeper and I've written books on zookeeping and I still get it wrong because I forget that I think being a monkey is enough. And that's the key problem. And that's very interesting, especially when times, well, of course, the question is always the performance. Performance review used to be annual. Now it became more frequent, more frequently checking with people and talking about performance management and giving feedback. Tell us about your views on feedback and how to give effective feedback so it actually achieves what it's supposed to achieve, that is performance improvement. Here's the first problem. Of all the animals, monkeys, lions and dolphins hate the word feedback. We can't cope with feedback. Here's a new word for you. you ready for this? You want to write this down? <laughs> I got my pants handy. <laughs> Great zookeepers give feed forward. You see, from an animal point of view, the minute you say the word feedback, what do you think I hear? Do you think this, I've done a great job? What I'm scared about is what have I done wrong? So in leadership, performance reviews, and the very word appraisal, if you look at the word appraisal, half of the word is about praise. Take your word app, it's about praise. So regular appraisals is about feed forward about the jobs that they've done well, the jobs that you want them to do well in the future. The only people who love feedback are, lions, are elephants, rather. Elephants love feedback because it gives them time to reflect. Here's the problem. If you're going to work as a zookeeper, you need to understand that monkeys can't cope with feedback because the very first thing I hear is what have I done wrong? So you've got to love me first, tell me what I've done right. Then you've got to tell me what I can do even better in the future. And then tell me you still love me and you want me in your team. Now, that's as a monkey. So feed forward is so key in these, these times because we do a review and we forget that when we've left them with feedback or feed forward, you expect them to go back onto the shop floor, back into the office, back into selling, and they're still hearing those messages. There's only two reasons to give feed forward. It's either to inspire them or to fire them. There's no middle ground on this. If you're not going to inspire someone to do even better next time, why are you giving them feedback? What's the purpose? Letting them know they've done a good job. So that's feed forward. If you're going to give someone bad news and you're not going to inspire them and you're not going to train them and you're not going to motivate them, you might as well let them go. I tell everyone who I work with at a senior leadership team, look at your team. If you're willing to invest in your team and give them feed forward, keep them. And if you're not willing to invest in them, you need to fire them. And the problem is 95% of people know exactly who they need to fire, but they're not willing to go there because it's uncomfortable. And, and great zookeepers hate firing people, but great zookeepers know that too many people are in their zoos. You don't have a happy zoo. Let's just go to just very quickly with the other animals. If you're going to give feed forward to a lion, you need to make sure it's done in public. You need to make sure everyone knows what a great job they've done. And you can never embarrass them in public ever. If you want to give elephants feedback, you've got to tell them in advance what you're going to be telling them because they need time to think about it. You can't just walk into their office and give them feedback, good or bad, because they panic. And dolphins need it for their team. And never use these words to a dolphin. I'm a little bit disappointed in you. They will take that very personally. And it's like a suicide note to a dolphin. Very powerful messages, very, very powerful, very simple, but yet so powerful if you really uh, dig deeper with the, the, the deep meaning of your, of your messages. So behavioral change 
it takes a long time. It's an enormous task just to work on somebody's, uh, first of all, to identify that, okay, this is the sort of a behavior I want to change and I kind of start working consciously about being able to identify the different style, become a good zookeeper. So if, you, if, I, if, if I were to ask you, give me one or two ideas where to begin beyond, of course, reading your book, it's a zoo around here. Once people have done that, where to begin to ensure that there is a sort of a right behavioral change for somebody to become eventually a, a good zookeeper? The first thing I do is I go on what I call a coffee walk or in this moment, a virtual coffee walk. And it's to sit down and just ask them a couple of basic questions to see their style of communication. So if I said to you, have you booked any holidays at all for when this all finishes? Have you booked any holidays? I was planning, but not yet. <laughs> the pandemic hit. Yeah, but you see, as an elephant, that's a classic, I'm planning it. Well, actually, no, actually, I, I did book one holiday for July. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I, there was one booked, yes. Okay, now you got a little bit defensive with me, so you went into lion mode with me, okay? <laughs> so just the very nature of your language, if I really listen as a zookeeper, you're telling me who you are. As a monkey, I'm going to go, I've got so many places to go I want to go to. I haven't even booked, I'll wait till the last minute. Dolphins will be saying, I need to check on the family first. I need to see what everyone else wants to do. If I asked you if you went to the hairdresser, if I asked you how your health is, simple questions that I ask, if I really listen, that's why I say great zookeepers give their staff a good listening to. If you listen carefully, they will tell you their animal signs. Monkeys don't often answer a question with, with a real question because they're so busy, they've forgotten what the question is by the time they've asked the question. So they start getting very animated. Lines are very straightforward. Yes, I booked a holiday. I'm going to the Maldives. First class, obviously, because that's the way lions work. Elephants, we're still planning it. Yes, we've got a couple of ideas where we might be going. And if you listen carefully, they will tell you the signals that will let you know what type of, sorry, they'll let you know what type of animal they are. Now, you won't get it right first time, but the more you listen, and the more you ask questions, the more they'll tell you their answers. So I urge everyone to sit down with their team, ask them some basic questions. If they want, I've got a free online quiz, go on, do the quiz online, and it will give you an idea what type of animal they are. The better you get at communication and the better listener you are, the word listen has the same letters as the word silent. And if you are silent while people are communicating and you become a good listener, you will pick up on their signals. And the better you become at listening, the better you are at communication. Very powerful, Nigel. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, people have extremely complex bio machines. We are way more complex than simply four animals or four boxes. But I guarantee if we were to get it right, just based on these four principles, this world would, would be a so much better place and so much more communication. Effective communication would occur in teams, in organizations, in families, in relationships. It would be just so much easier if we all took the effort to consciously uh, recognize that we are different, why we are different, how we are different. And as, of course, as you suggested, pay attention, listen and comprehend what the other person is saying uh, before before getting ready to respond. So uh, very, very good messages. Thank you so much for generously sharing. Uh, people who want to grab a copy of your book, it's available. It's a zoo around here. Uh, how is the best way to get in touch with you? Where can they take the quiz if they like to dive deeper in the in the idea of it's a zoo around here? So if they go to nigelrisner.com, N-I-G-E-L-R-I-S-N-E-R.com, uh, it's all the information is there. There's the quiz there. My store is there. If they want to order the book, they can buy it on Amazon. They can download it on Kindle. It's all available for everyone. Fantastic. And of course, uh, you being a monkey, you're very happy to get connection requests on LinkedIn as well. Are you LinkedIn? I, I, I would be so happy. That, that, that's like my bar of chocolate. And if they send me a little note, I'll even send a note back. Wonderful. Thank you, Nigel. It's been an absolute blast. I appreciate that. So much indeed. Take care. Stay safe.